It's a Minimalist Monday edition of Optimal Finance Daily, episode 361, Eight Ways Minimalism Helps Put Money in Your Pocket and Financially Support Other Causes, both by Joshua Becker of becomingminimalist.com. And hi, everybody. Uh, Welcome back to another week of Optimal Finance Daily. I am your host, Dan. I'm here each Monday through Friday reading to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet. And today I'm going to read two posts from Joshua Becker. They're pretty short, especially the second one, but they're both very much worth hearing. And this episode is brought to you by SendPro from Pitney Bowes. SendPro has three times the features of stamps.com at one third the price. Visit pb.com slash finance to learn more and try it free for 90 days. After that, you'll get SendPro for only $5 per month. That's a third of the cost of stamps.com. That special $5 rate is good for the lifetime of your SendPro subscription, but only when you sign up at pb.com slash finance. So now let's get right to our content today. We're gonna hear two posts as we optimize your life. Eight Ways Minimalism Helps Put Money in Your Pocket by Joshua Becker of becomingminimalist.com. At first glance, the minimalist lifestyle has a simple goal, own fewer things. However, below the surface, minimalism is about something more. It's about reevaluating our pursuits, our habits, and our motivations. My family was introduced to minimalism eight years ago and immediately began removing unneeded possessions from every room in our home. As a result, we quickly found more time, more energy, less stress, and more opportunity to focus on things that matter. As you might imagine, we also experienced financial benefits. Excess possessions are a drain on our finances. Here are eight ways minimalism can help put more money in your pocket. One, selling unneeded clutter. The LA Times recently reported the average American home contains 300,000 items. That's a lot of clutter, and that's a lot of money sitting around, probably more than you realize. Bob Lodich, a personal finance blogger at Seed Time, even reported making more than $2,000 his first month selling off clutter. Two, buying less stuff. Minimalists routinely spend less on retail purchases than their consumeristic peers. This should come as no surprise. What is surprising is how easy that transformation occurs for some people. Once a person experiences the freedom of owning less, they routinely become more and more attracted to living with less. At that point, the grip that consumerism holds on their checkbook begins to break. Three, maintaining fewer belongings. Too often when we purchase an item, we only look at the sticker price but this is rarely the full cost. Our purchases always cost more in the long run. They also require ongoing energy and focus. And because everything eventually fades, breaks, or becomes obsolete, many of our existing possessions often require additional financial investment. This can clearly be seen in large items like houses, cars, and appliances. Small fixes and maintenance costs also tend to add up. Four, storing fewer possessions. The structures we build, buy, and rent to store our ever-increasing number of possessions is quite unbelievable. Our houses have tripled in size over the last 50 years. Off-site storage is the fastest-growing segment of commercial real estate, and only 33% of Americans can park both cars in their two-car garage. Those who choose to live a minimalist life return all that added expense of storing possessions back into their pocket. Just imagine how different your finances might look if you lived in a smaller home. Five. Taking tax deductions from donations. As people begin to experience the benefits of owning less, they are drawn to remove even more clutter from their home. This almost always results in more possessions being minimized than can be sold. But even in this case, the financial gain remains as the IRS provides opportunity for taxpayers to deduct the fair market value of donated clothing, household goods, used furniture, shoes, books, and so forth. Six, experiencing improved emotional and physical health. Every possession adds increased anxiety into our lives. Recently, the New York Times referred to our generation as the most stressed, tired, and rushed generation of all time. Many of the statistics cited in the article can be traced back to the fact that our generation simply owns more physical possessions than any generation in history. Minimalism brings greater emotional health to our lives. Emotional health brings physical health, and both are among the greatest investments we can possibly make. Seven. Finding Increased Intentionality in Spending. Minimalism brings greater intentionality in all areas of life. It begins by forcing us to evaluate our possessions, why we own what we own. But oftentimes, the principle of keeping only the best extends to other areas of life too, schedules, relationships, health, and habits. 
once we begin to practice healthier habits in other areas of life, wiser decisions are easier to implement in our spending as well. Eight, freeing up time for extra income. One of the greatest benefits of minimalism is the amount of time that is returned to our lives. When we have less to clean, organize, maintain, and repair, we have more time for other pursuits. Whether you are working hard to reduce debt, build up a savings account, or fund an early retirement, minimalism allows you the opportunity to direct that free time towards extra income, if that's how you choose to use it. Maya Angelou once said, we need much less than we think we need. This truth lies at the heart of minimalism, and it may be an important realization to maximize your pocketbook as well. Financially Support Other Causes by Joshua Becker of becomingminimalist.com. Living a simple life provides the opportunity to financially support other causes. Minimalism provides an opportunity to not just save money for the sake of keeping it for myself, but to use it to further causes that I believe in. I met a man recently who has just put his house on the market to sell so that he can donate some money to a charity that he believes in strongly. Let me adjust that. He has put one of his homes on the market. He has recently decided that there are more important things in life than owning houses in every imaginable climate. Now, I may not be tempted to sell my house, I only have one, but I am seeing the value of not purchasing another coat this winter, another piece of art for my wall, or another new and improved cleaning solution so that my finances can be given to bigger causes. I am learning that our money is only as valuable as what we choose to spend it on. You just listened to the posts titled Eight Ways Minimalism Helps Put Money in Your Pocket and Financially Support Other Causes, both by Joshua Becker of becomingminimalist.com. And speaking of putting money in your pocket, this episode was brought to you by SendPro from Pitney Bowes. SendPro has three times the features of stamps.com at one third the price. It's really easy to use. You can actually print stamps straight from your computer, saving money and time, and you don't even need any special equipment to do it or software. It works right from the web, no installations to worry about. You gotta try it out. You can get an incredible deal only through pb.com slash finance. And that deal is, you'll get SendPro free for 90 days. You'll get a free 10 pound scale. And when your free trial is over, again, this is after a full 90 days, you'll get SendPro for only $5 a month. And that rate is good for the life of your SendPro subscription. That's $5 a month compared to $15.99 a month for Stamps.com, which is three times the features of Stamps.com at one-third the price. Again, you can get all of that through our special link, pb.com slash finance. And that's gonna do it for our Minimalist Monday show today. Tomorrow, we'll have another post from one of our frequent authors here on the show, Mr. Money Mustache. So I will see you there where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Finance Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.